Listen to this. The best of microwave. And we're here today with the San Bernardino Microwave Society as well as the San Diego Microwave Group. And king of microwavers, many of the kings, is Wayne Yoshida, King Henry VI, Whiskey Zulu. Wayne, uh, how about telling our Ham Nation viewers a little bit about this get together along with that great beacon that is being pulled in? Uh, sure. I'm Wayne, KH6WZ. Uh, that's where the king comes from, by the way. Oh, okay. There you go. The uh, <laughs> I'm listening to uh, uh, frequency uh, 10368 uh, 310. That's the frequency for the San, uh, excuse me, Fraser Mountain Beacon. That's the N6CA slash B at Delta Mike 04 Mexico Sierra is the uh, grid square. And if you listen to the idea, you'll hear it. For those of you who know Morse code, and of course you should. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, again, I'm with San, uh, the SBMS group. There are about uh, 30, 20 or 30, uh, I'm sorry, there are about 20 people here testing their 10 gigahertz and up radios. We have everything from uh, 10 gigahertz and 24 gigahertz and 47 gigahertz. If you look that way, you will see a, a post and a transmitter and receiver combination that's used to test our transmit and receive capabilities of our uh, microwave systems today. That's what we're doing. And uh, Wayne, how long have you been playing microwave and what's your best? Now I'm going to turn that down just a little bit. And of course I turned the wrong knob so I'm in deep trouble. What's your best uh, DX that you can recall? Actually, uh, I hold a, I'm, I'm one of the few people who actually hold a North American record for two-way uh, communication on 10 gigahertz. Actually, I was with Chip N6CA at the time. We were in Central California, and the other stations were in uh, Baja, Mexico. It's almost a thousand miles, over 900 something kilometers. Wow, 900 kilometers on 10,000 megahertz. Now, what type of power output do many of these uh, systems run? Well, anywhere from between uh, a one watt or less to as many as much as 10 watts. I have a six watt uh, system here, uh, eBay surplus. It's amazing what you can find these days. The dish antenna certainly helps. This is a 30 inch Prodlin offset dish with a feed that's been modified to handle 10 gigahertz. You can see the flexible waveguide on this unit. Uh, going to the uh, transverter section here. And uh, Wayne, uh, we have two contests uh, each year sponsored by the American Radio Relay League. Yes, that's right. It's called the 10 gigahertz and up, and it's uh, in August, and then there's a part two in September. And everybody heads for the mountaintops? Uh, actually, people go to mountains, they uh, go to the deserts, they go to the flatlands in central California, uh, or they go, uh, they operate from home. And uh, Wayne, where would be a good place for folks to look up more about San Bernardino Microwave Society and where to get some of this great equipment either as a kit or fully assembled? Ah, very good question. Uh, first of all, the San Bernardino, San Bernardino Microwave Society has a website. It's uh, ham-radio.com slash sbms. And uh, if you go to that website, it'll include links to other websites as well. Let's see, what was your other question about equipment? The equipment I happen to be using uh, is a mix between commercially available kits and home brew stuff, as well as surplus material from eBay and other sources. Um, here in the US, you can purchase uh, kits as well as fully built products from uh, uh, Steve at Down East Microwave. Another outfit based in Germany is Kuhn Electronic. Uh, in the US, it's distributed by SSB Electronic USA. Uh, you can Google their websites to find them as well for more information. Um, again, the SBMS and the San Diego Microwave Group have been very, very helpful to all of us here getting on the air and modifying our equipment and testing it and getting our systems running. Chris, N9RIN here for the San Bernardino Microwave Society 10 gigahertz and the higher antenna test, right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, uh, we're testing our radios to make sure that they're working and, and able to hear and transmit for the upcoming contest. So we're going to do both receive as well as transmit, correct? Yes, that's correct. And how many bands will we be able to test? Uh, let's see, it looks like about uh, four. Uh, 10 gigahertz, 24 gigahertz, 47, 
oh i guess only three uh i think tony was planning on trying 76 gig or, or 77 gigahertz but that's not available here's my rig um have a surplus cobbled together feed horn uh, inside is the transverter assembly itself in this box here which is a surplus uh box and seems to be getting very warm um bought a a dish off of ebay uh, it's a three foot dish and then in the back is the if radio at uh, um it's an ft817 and i found out that very voltage very stable voltage is uh, required by listening to members of the San Bernardino Microwave Society and their past experiences with uh, battery voltage problems. It takes a weak signal two meter radio. If that's gonna be your LO, it could be 432, could be 10 meters, but that is the heart of the receiving system after the transverter brings the signals from 10 gigahertz down to the LO frequency. And look at this, this is a classic. This is the old but venerable ICOM 202. What a rig. And here's the way we check that we're really locked into the real signal. Just put our hand in front of the feed. Here we go away. Yep, that's 10 gigs and it's playing well. Okay, so we'll go for transmit. Okay, ready to transmit. That's it. Transmitting. Okay, got it. Got it? Yep, he's got it. Okay. Making sure your dish is absolutely level, we use the Gordo method and a uh, little plumb bob there. And that's how we tell when we've got the dish absolutely aimed uh, level. Marty is with the American Radio Relay League as vice director in charge of all of, uh, what, Southern California? Southern California and Arizona. I'm not in charge. All we, we're basically unpaid servants. <laughs> well, you do a great job, and the league does a great job. In fact, the league has a couple of operating events on 10 gigs uh, coming up, right? They do. In fact, the uh, 10 gigahertz and up contest, uh, one of many sponsored by the league to encourage people to get on the air, uh, has two weekends to it. The first weekend is in uh, just two weeks here in, October, in August, and then another weekend in September. Wow, and we'll have all the microwavers out. Now, they've got to lug all their gear out. Tell us what you got here, Marty. Well, this is uh, kind of the simple approach. Uh, it's one which we can drive around. What we have here is a, um, an old uh, uh, aluminum uh, Halliburton case that has four transverters in it. You were describing transverters earlier that take, uh, in this case, two gigahertz, three, five, and ten, the four, those four amateur bands, uh, converts them down to two meters. The two meter radio uh, is in the in the V vehicle and there's a rotator in the vehicle the black uh, the black thing below the uh, in front of the case there and behind the dish is a rotator so I can aim the dish wow. it, that dish has uh, a dual band feed it will take 10 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz you'll notice most of the other folks you're looking at have much larger dishes they have more gain which makes them uh, give better signals over distance but it also makes it more critical to point and also it would be much more difficult uh, driving down the highway at 60 or 70 miles an hour uh, as it is when I put the full set of antlers on this thing it goes down a uh, mileage goes down from about 19 to 14 if I had one of those on I'm not sure what I would get but Pad N6 RMJ adds a computer to not only look at signal strength but also do some of the digital modes on 10 and higher gigahertz plus it also allows them to take a look at CW that sometimes is so far in the noise that only the computer can decode it to make sure he's tied into the right station or the right beacon. And again we see the Anderson connectors in use by the 10 and higher microwave experts. 10 gigahertz that is. 10,000 megahertz expand. All right, how's the testing going? Do we have some real winners out there? Not to pat myself on the back as uh. Pat, but so far I have the best on 10 gigs. And uh, Pat, you've got a computer built right into your system, right? That's correct. Uh, the computer gave me uh, five more dB of well. received signal. 
Wow, plus you can do digital modes as well. Correct, digital or CW with it, and it helps on peaking. Kerry, N6I, ZW, uh, we do this uh, same uh, ERP MDS testing uh, at our San Diego microwave group uh, about a week earlier, and then we uh, come up here where we have our combined San Diego microwave group and SBMS uh, testing. Uh, we've got uh, good results and we've got uh, bad results, and that's what the, what it's all about is uh, you're finding some rigs that need a little attention and other ones that are working just fine. Dan K6NKC says you got to keep this steady. So take a look what he uses. He uses it looks like a discarded old battery, yet he's got a backup battery here. Battery power is so important for 10 gigahertz microwave mountain topping. So here you will see a regular 10 gigahertz transceiver, the dish the IF radio and the signal from the IF radio is being fed into this computer and then on the screen you will normally see a baseline and a signal in the form of a straight line. In, in the case of WSAT you will see a number of dots on the screen and then the software will decode these dots into uh, a particular frame that uh, forms a QSO in principle. The trouble that we are having here is because of the sunlight, um, we get too much reflection off from the computer screen. And actually that's why I use this arrangement here. And normally I will sit under the, under the, uh, under the hood, so to say, in order to see the picture. Uh, it is a drawback, but um, getting a computer that you can use in daylight is, uh, is a very expensive <laughs> proposition. Go ahead. Mm. I am. Oh, <laughs> we're transmitting. <laughs> That's oh, never a good sign. Go ahead. <laughs> he's got it. He does? Yeah, he's got it. That's like when you're arm wrestling and the other guy goes, go ahead, start. <laughs>